The following is a special presentation of Ashland University's College of Arts and Sciences. Welcome to the CAS Spotlight, a show where we spotlight different staff and faculty members here in the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm your host, Rebecca Ribley. Here with me today, I have Professor Hovey, who is the author of Unexpected Jesus, The Gospel as Surprise. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. So I want to start out by asking a little bit about yourself. You're a professor here on campus. Mm -hmm. What do you teach? I teach in the religion department. There's four of us who teach there, and I teach classes in the Bible. Uh, and primarily in the area of theology and ethics, and uh, including a class called Taking Human Life. It's very interesting. We talk about suicide and euth euthanasia and uh, abortion and capital punishment. It's not a how-to course, though. Wow, that sounds really interesting. All right, so how long have you taught at Ashland? This is my fourth year, and uh, I, I moved here from Southern California and um, uh, have really enjoyed my time here at Ashland. That's great. So I know students always like to hear where their professors went to school. Where did you study? I did my PhD at the University of Cambridge in England. And the English system is a little bit different from here, and so you're able to do a PhD in a shorter amount of time. I was able to complete my PhD in three years, which was great. I, I'd already had two master's degrees from schools in the United States, and so I, I was able to do it rather quickly. That's great. So what did you study? I studied uh, technically called divinity, which is a really broad subject, but I focused on theology and Christian ethics, which is the field mm -hmm. that I teach in now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as a lot of my colleagues were working in a lot of different areas, including in, in other religions and uh, so forth. But uh, Cambridge is a very strong place for studying theology. All right. When we come back after this break, we'll hear more about Dr. Hubby's book, Unexpected Jesus. I think what makes us unique is that we've brought together journalism, video, and audio, all three of those elements together and converged them so that we reflect the industry and how things are going today. Our philosophy is to train you so that what you're doing here reflects what's happening out there in the real world. Additionally, you're getting those liberal arts benefits. We are academically rigorous. We're going to make you a good critical thinker, an excellent writer, and really set you out into the world with the knowledge base that you need to have in order to be successful. Spotlight. I'm your host, Rebecca Rively, and with me I have Professor Hubby. So I want to dive into your book, Unexpected Jesus, and I know it's really deep and probably hard to summarize in two sentences, but how would you explain this book to a potential reader? Okay, right. Well, uh, I spent a lot of time writing this book, and with the goal of trying to address um, an, a uh, a Christian readership that's not trained specifically in theology, and uh, I still may have written it uh, at a slightly high level, but it deals with questions about knowing and unknowing. Um, in particular, what it's like to know God, what it's like to know Jesus, and, and the central dynamic, if there is one, is to say that uh, knowing God is, is different from knowing information. Um, there's uh, maybe a bit longer than two sentences here, but um, there's a paradox that comes up in, in um, some writings of Plato called the Meno Paradox, in which um, the teaching is that it's impossible to know, uh, to learn anything new, because how would you know that you've discovered it if you didn't already know it to begin with? But if you already knew it to begin with, why would you bother going about trying to learn it? Uh, I think that works if we're talking about information, but it doesn't work if we're talking about people. 
So it certainly doesn't uh, work if we're talking about God. Uh, and so knowing another person is different from knowing a piece of information. And I think the, the crucial difference there is love. Um, if, you, uh, y if you're educated as to what love is, um, just knowing about it isn't going to be satisfying because what you want is the love itself. And once you reach out and begin loving someone, you're open to the possibility that they won't love you back. And so you're all of a sudden thrown into a vulnerability. And so I'm exploring this idea that there's a vulnerability to our knowing other people, in particular to knowing God. Oh, that's great. So this book was published in this year, in 2012. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure this idea has been a long time coming. Where and when did you come up with this idea? Yeah, that's a great question because uh, this book has taken me longer. It's not all that thick of a book, but uh, it has taken me longer to write than some of my other books. And the reason is I've, um, I've kind of had it percolating in my mind for several years, and I write a little bit here and a little bit there. A lot of it comes out of um, the work I did on my first book, uh, which is called To Share in the Body, and it's, it's a book about Mark's Gospel in the New Testament. And, um, it, and it's a very disturbing, um, Mark's Gospel is a very disturbing book. I suppose my book might be disturbing for other reasons. Um, but I began thinking about this because as Jesus is displayed in Mark's Gospel, um, he's very frustratingly elusive, and he's constantly running ahead. And, and there's this dynamic of people trying to grab a hold of him, whether physically or, or with their concepts, with their idea of who he is. And he's constantly eluding them and evading them and taking off. And when they get to where he was, he doesn't stay for long and he leaves. And the whole book ends, it's the only gospel where you don't get to see the risen Jesus. See, he, you see an empty tomb and that's it. And then the book ends. It almost ends abruptly in mid-sentence. And so I've been working with this unsettling notion of, um, you know, is God trying to evade us, you know, and, and what's going on there? And so it really grew out of some work that I did several years ago, and I began work on this um, probably about four years ago. All right. So when you're writing a book, you obviously have to do research. What kind of research mm -hmm. did you do for this book? I wrote a great deal of theology about Jesus, and there's some really interesting medieval theology there's a lot of theology about Jesus. I mean, Jesus is, is, is the core of, of Christian theology. Uh, but I especially spent some time reading the work of Thomas Aquinas, a 13th century Christian theologian. And there's some earlier sources, uh, especially Gregory of Nyssa, um, who's, who's known as one of the Cappadocian fathers and wrote in the uh, fourth and fifth century. So what was your writing process throughout this book? Well, my normal process is to, um, is to do a kind of slow, steady approach to just get words on paper or in the computer. Um, but it, it, in this case, I was working around other book projects I was working on. And so um, uh, my, my process, though, it, it was more drawn out. But I, I stuck to my, pr my typical process of, uh, and this is something I advise for students to do, too, is whenever you read something that's about an article length or a book uh, chapter length, is to then sit down and compose, say, a 500-word response to it. And it can be a little bit uh, rougher on the edges. And I say, you know, imagine you're writing an email to your mom. Oh, I just read this thing, and here's why it's interesting. And so, um, and lo and behold, if you do that long enough, you, you know, you have a book. Uh, you can't usually just hit print at that point. But, uh, but the words really add up, and uh, I find that the thoughts come once you start committing yourself to writing in response to things. New thoughts come and new questions come. Okay. So how long did it take you to come up with a final product? Well, I spent last summer, uh, after the end of the semester, up through the end of June, so that was um, almost two months, uh, revising some, some of the material I already had and then adding maybe an additional, uh, maybe half of the book at that point and revising and editing. Uh, and then I set myself the goal of finishing by June and, and met that deadline. Wow, that's a lot faster than I, than I thought it would be. Well, I, I, my, uh, my approach is to s devote myself after graduation to just yeah. go to my office and, and only work on one thing. And I think if you do that and uh, you know, I'm not checking email constantly and things like that, then you can actually get a lot of work done. <laughs> That's great. All right, we'll be back right after this break with Professor Hubby. What makes uh, our journalism and digital media department um, unique from maybe some of the other colleges and universities in Ohio is that we 
offer the opportunity for students to get involved. We don't ask them to go off and take their general classes and come back in two years. We ask them to get involved from the very first day. Welcome back to the CAS Spotlight. I'm Rebecca Rivney and here with me I have Dr. Hubby, who is the author of Unexpected Jesus. Now, we were just talking about um, how long it took you to come up with a final product. Mm -hmm. How many drafts would you say you went through? Well, I, I suppose I, uh, I try to get it right the first time, and it's never perfect the first time. But I try to avoid uh, leaving so many loose ends that it takes a long time to go back. I find that that takes too long. And so my goal is to, um, as I'm writing chapter, draft chapters, to have them fairly complete. I, I don't know, I, I suppose I'm wanting to be surprised by them. I don't really know where it's going as I begin them, but I, I pretty much know when a chapter's done. Um, and so I, I went through, I never went back and rewrote whole sections. Um, but I did a lot of editing to smooth out the language and to make it flow. That's great. You're mm -hmm. a pro. You've written so many books <laughs> already. Um, so I'm sure a lot of students on campus are aspiring to write books and have them published. What kind of steps would you say a student should go through to get a book published? Well, I, I absolutely encourage students to, to write and to aim high, and, and particularly in courses where there's a lot of writing. Um, to, to think beyond the assignment and, and to think about, you know, how might this be publishable? Now, not everything that we write will get published, but, uh, but it's worth aspiring to. And there are, um, I've worked with some undergraduates who have, uh, who have written things that have been published, and I co-authored a book review with a student. And so one thing to, uh, I would say is talk to your professors and see if they, because your professors are all writing things, or they should be, and um, and see if you can get in on their research. That might be kind of a bold question, but I think it's worth asking. And I've done the same thing, uh, as I say, with some of my students. And maybe you can uh, co-author something, uh, and that kind of thing. So take advantage of the uh, writing opportunities you have in courses. Talk to your professors about their own research. And then I would say, just make it a daily habit of writing. My, I've mentioned my process a little bit. Uh, my, uh, I, I, because of family life and things like that, I, I never pull an all-nighter, you know, I, I never wait till the last minute. I know students are famous for doing that. Um, but I would say try to unlearn those last-minute habits and get in, be a, the tortoise, you know, who wins the race by, by doing a long, um, drawn-out uh, approach. And so I, my goal is a very simple one, 500 words every weekday. I take the weekends off. And, uh, and so I suggest that students maybe uh, see if you can write 500 words every weekday. It doesn't matter what it's on, but keep the ideas flowing, keep the words coming. And 500 words, that can take a half hour. That's not, that's not hard. Yeah, that's a great goal. Mm -hmm. So as we both have mentioned before, you've written books previous to this one. Mm -hmm. How many books have you written? This is my sixth book. Um, and, and there's another book that's coming out uh, next month. And it, it's really on a different topic, um, but it's a, it's a Christian response to the atheist writer Sam Harris, who's put out a book on morality and ethics. And so it's my critique of him and all the reasons he's wrong and, and so forth. Okay, great. All right, stay tuned. We'll be back right after this break. I think what makes us unique is that we've brought together journalism, video, and audio, all three of those elements together and converge them so that we reflect the industry and how things are going today. Our philosophy is to train you so that what you're doing here reflects what's happening out there in the real world. Additionally, you're getting those liberal arts benefits. We are academically rigorous. We're going to make you a good critical thinker, an excellent writer, and really set you out into the world with the knowledge base that you need to have in order to be successful.
CAS Spotlight. I'm Rebecca Ribley, and joining me I have Professor Hubby. So I want to kind of close up this interview by, um, by asking you what advice you would give to a student who's writing a book. Okay. Well, I, I, the, I would say um, to continue to make uh, slow and steady progress, as I've mentioned, but then there are also uh, publishing questions, which is maybe what you're, you're getting at. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, your professors are great resources, you know, if they've published books, and they've certainly read a, a lot, and, uh, and can maybe put you in touch with a publisher. There's a process that uh, you would go through with most publishers in terms of putting together a proposal, um, and publishers aren't going to have the time, usually, to, um, to read your whole manuscript. And so it's possible in a lot of cases and this varies by discipline somewhat, but in a lot of cases you could work on a proposal. Uh, you have to have a pretty good idea of what you're going to write, but you don't always have to have the book written in advance. And uh, different publishers have different guidelines for what they expect from a proposal. They all want a sample of text, but uh, usually not more than a chapter will suffice. And so work on that chapter, work on the big picture, and also give some thought to what the market is. You know, why would someone bother it might be interesting to you, and you might enjoy writing it, but why would someone bother buying it? Because that's really what publishers are interested in. And if you can satisfy them that there's a market, and it's not just you know you and your family or something, uh, but there's a wider market out there, uh, then it's possible that, that a publisher will take an interest. Okay. So you said before that this book, Unexpected Jesus, The Gospel as Surprise, took a lot of research and work. Mm -hmm. Would you do it all again? Yeah, I would. Um, and, you know, I've written a lot of different kinds of books for different kinds of audiences. And one of the things I've striven for with this book is to write to a, a wider audience, a, a not strictly academic audience, but one that um, respects scholarship and is interested in the findings of scholarship. And um, it, I'd like to do that again, certainly. The kind of book that is uh, attempting to reach a kind of broader, Christian audience that I, I talk about the educated lay reader being um, uh, people who are in churches, especially maybe some clergy who are interested in continuing their education, but they're not going to seek out really thick books with really dense uh, prose and technical vocabulary. All right. So finally, I want to ask you, what do you want the reader to take away from this book? Yeah, I think the main thing is uh, I'd like readers to appreciate that there is um, that there's a space in Christian belief that is like the season of Lent. The season of Lent comes before Easter, and it's a season. Of, it's a really dark season. And it's a, it's a penitential season, and it's a time when there are more questions than answers. And I feel like that's true of life uh, for most people. That we have more questions than we have answers and uh, that there's space in, within Christianity to explore the questions um, without feeling like we need to supply answers all the time. And then, of course, when, when Easter comes, it's not simply an answer. It brings with it a whole host of questions, too. All right. Thank you so much for joining us You're today. Welcome. Thank you. This has been another episode of the CAS Spotlight. I'm Rebecca Ribley. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.